Let's get it, everybody. Welcome back to the station. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Ray G here for the Draft Network, and I'm joined by two of the talented scouts from the Draft Network to my right, sort of kind of my left, your left, yeah. my right. I got my man Keith Sanchez in the building. You can find him on Twitter at the Talent Code on Twitter. Make sure you tap in to everything that Keith is doing. And to my, I'm looking at him on my left, but probably your right or my right, your left. I got my man DP Dame in the building, Damian Parson. You can find him on Twitter at DP underscore NFL. These are the guys. This is Draft Good Players. It's the Players Lounge. We got coaches. We got players. We got film evaluators. We got everything in the building to talk all things football, NFL, college, we're going to debate, we're going to argue, we're going to agree, we're going to love one another, but most importantly, we're here to educate, grow, let y'all know what our processes are and what we're thinking about these players, whether they're collegiate prospects or NFL talent. Um, so I'm excited to do this with you. Keith, how you doing this morning, baby? I'm good, man. Feeling like a million dollars. Uh, you know, we got our guy DP on this time. We had to get the the trio going. So I think we about to create a hot fire. I'm excited. Let's get it. Let's That's get what I'm to talking it. about. When I did that earlier, DP was scared. But DP, what's up, baby? How you doing? Hey, man, it, it, it's it's Thursday morning, bro. It, it's NFL kickoff. I'm on I'm on live with my brothers, man. I'm feeling good, baby. Yes, yes, yes. You look good, Kate. We were making fun of Keith at the beginning. If y'all haven't seen it, we're gonna talk about it a little bit. Keith put out a a very necessary yet real talk video on Kayshawn Boutte. And we're going to talk about Kayshawn in a minute, but, you know, you look good, feel good, play good. You go back and watch that video. Keith got on the white on, jacket, baby. you know, the fresh shave. <laughs> he looking at the camera. So this is going to be fun. This is a free-flowing conversation. And one of the things that we talked about prior to doing the show is nobody just wants to hear us agree on everything, right? There's going to be some players that we all three are like, hell yeah, we're in lockstep. But this is real talk, man. Like, I really want to make sure that the people watching this understand our viewpoints and where we're coming from. And if we like something, we dislike it. Like, this is real talk. It's the lounge. We're going to kick it. We're going to keep it real. Um, so with that being said, Dame, you had talked about it at the very beginning. I mean, it's we're not going to bury the lead. We got football back. It's Thursday. It's September the 8th. We got the Bills versus the Rams. I'm, I'm, I'm excited that we're finally here, man. We actually get to watch real NFL meaningful football DP tell me what you're excited about uh from the from the Bills and the Rams side and then we'll get it to Keith and see what he's looking forward to man I mean let's, let's kick it off with, with with the guy himself Josh Allen right like this whole offseason has been Bills 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 and and Josh Allen's the MVP candidate and for and rightfully so they have one of the best if not the best roster when healthy in the league right now and an elite quarterback that can make every throw has the mobility to do all the different things right like with his legs extend plays run qb power stiff arm defensive lineman like he's a he's he's a super freak man he's a he's an alien at the quarterback position he can do things that most quarterbacks can't do and for me i'm excited to see what that looks like week one we know week one can be just a a, a hot take factory and, and, and football could be really unpredictable in week one. Like, we're, they're going to be matchups that we think are going to favor certain teams, and those teams are going to lose that matchup because it's week one. Yeah. Like, a lot of starters didn't play in preseason, so it's going to be some kinks and, you know, so, some things to, to iron out during the game. But I'm excited to see that for, for, for Buffalo. And, of course, also I want to see James Cook, too, in the backfield. Uh, I, I know Devin Singletary's there, and he's been the between-the-tackles guy uh, for them. Uh, along with Zach Moss, but James Cook is going to bring a different dimension to this offense that they have not had in, in previous years, right? There's a reason, guys, that they went after and almost secured J.D. McKissick from the Washington Commanders, right? Because they knew what they were missing, that easy outlet for their elite quarterback, and James Cook gives them that. And, of course, with the Rams, I want to see the pass rush. No Von Miller, he's gone. Like, you know, can Terrell Lewis and, and, and the rest of those guys – Help Aaron Donald out, right? Aaron Donald, we know he's going to get triple teamed and double teamed in the middle, but can these other guys on the edge step up and make necessary plays? I'm really intrigued by that matchup. Keith, I'm going to kick it to you because one of the things that, that came across the airwaves was Tredavious White, man. One of the top cornerbacks in the NFL is out. He's not playing. And, you know, they got to go up against Cooper Cup, Allen Robinson, Tyler Higby. And Kyrie Elam is projected to be their top cornerback. Very talented kid. 
out of Florida. I think the sky's the limit for this young man. But when you're looking at the Rams and you're looking at Cooper Cup and Allen Robinson, I get everything that DP's saying about Josh Allen. He is a freak. He is one of the most unique weapons in the NFL, period. And that offense, you talk about preseason football not mattering, that offense was humming throughout the entire preseason. I mean, all of them were balling, right? But this is Cooper Cup, baby, triple crown winner. This is Allen Robinson, who I still think is one of the better receivers in the NFL and is primed for a bounce-back season. I mean, what are the Bills defensively going to be able to do to match up with those offensive skill position players for the Rams? How are you feeling about that? Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, right? If I'm the Rams, I'm going into this game with bulletin board material that we won a Super Bowl last year, right? Mm -hmm. And then everybody talking about the Bills. Well, the Bills didn't do a damn thing. They had 13 seconds to seal the deal last year, and they didn't get the job done, right? So what I'm trying to say is that this. If I'm the Rams, I'm tapping into my Birdman, and I'm saying put some respect on my name. Like, I'm I'm the Super Bowl champ. We have Matthew Stafford. We have the Triple Crown winner, right? We went and signed Allen Robinson. We have the baddest man in football, regardless of position, talking about Aaron Donald. So mm-hmm. I'm going into this game feeling like the underdog in a sense, right? And, and essentially, all of that transfers to pressure on the Buffalo Bills. While this is a great situation, right, time in and time out, as an NFL team, the only thing you want to do is this. You put yourself in position to where you have a top three or four roster in the NFL and you can be considered to be a Super Bowl contender. And that's, that's what the Buffalo Bills have done. But along with that comes pressure, right? Josh Allen is almost the NFL's darling, right? Like he, yeah. he's become, he's quickly becoming a poster child for the NFL. Like that dual threat mobile guy, everybody wants a Josh Allen-esque type quarterback. So I would be interested in seeing how the head coach manages Josh Allen, how does he kind of, you know, let him run the football, you know, kind of pull it away from him? Do they take deep shots? Because there's a lot of different dynamics. And even, let's get into this, right? Because I tweeted something out and everybody got on me about Gabe Davis, right? Because I said <laughs> Khalil Shakir has opportunity. We're, like, the NFL community is all in on Gabe Davis right now. Yep, everybody. look at the stats, he had one good game last year. So when you're talking about outside of Stephon Diggs, it's like, okay, who are going to be those other weapons? And, and like DP said, it has to be James Cook, right? Because you need another receiving threat out of the backfield. So I'm excited to see just all of the little nuances. Now, like I said, just haven't been behind the, the scenes. Coaches get tight too. You know, we talk about players in pressure situations. Mm. Coaches get tight too to where they don't call their normal scripts because they're trying to make an emphasis on something, right? Like they're trying to make sure they cover their back or they're trying to think about, man, I wonder what the meat is going to say about me after this game. So I'm excited just to see all the different dynamics. And then, of course, football is back. So let's, you know, we, it's, it's excited. Yeah, man. And it's funny because they are the underdogs. The betting favorite money is heavily on the Bills to, to beat the Super Bowl champs at home. Like, the Rams are in L.A., right? Yeah. And Sean McVay, <laughs> in opening in opening games at home, I believe he's like 5-0. and oh. Like, he just... You just don't want to play that game with Sean McVay. You don't. These are Super Bowl champs, man. Put some respect on their name. I'm with y'all. I'm excited about it. I want to see Cook. I want to see A. Rob. I want to see Bobby Wagner in the middle of that defense. Cam Akers. Cam Akers. Daryl Henderson. You can't. This is a fantastic opening night matchup. But listen, it's not the only thing that's going on in the football world because we had Week One of college football in the books and. The takes right now are wild. Like, there's a lot of, I I don't know if it's, oh, I want your opinion. Like, how much stock do you put, Keith, into week one? Like, is there, if I were to say right now, Anthea Richardson is my QB1, am I overreacting? Like, I'm, I'm oh, watching. I would, what say, I would, say, I would I, say, hold on, big fella. Okay. Talk to me then. Talk to if Not I so say, fast, if, my but friend. Hold on, Keith. I, but but why? I, I, we were high on him coming into the season. They face a number seven ranked Utah team. And he goes out there. And while he didn't throw for 300 yards, it wasn't some multi-touchdown game. Just if you're talking about the tools and the talent, man, like why are we not saying every mock that we're seeing still Will Anderson at, at, at 101? And I'm just saying, if Houston is that damn bad, I get how right. good Will Anderson is, but they're not passing on a quarterback, man. So just after one week of college football, Keith, are do we need to pump the brakes, relax, or is it okay to adjust? Yeah, I, I think it's the last one. It's okay to adjust. I'm going to tell you what's real. Georgia's defense is real, right? Mm-hmm. Alabama, 
is real. Right. Oregon, they showed us last week that <laughs> that's not the real yes. thing. Yeah. Um, we, we, we about to take it to the West Coast to your guys, USC, the Trojans. I think Caleb Williams and the Trojans, I think that's the real deal, right? Like they got Jordan Addison involved immediately. And that's a hard thing to do, right? To get to game plan a kid that everybody knows they're going to be double teaming them and that the offense wants to get involved. You've seen Leakin Riley's, I guess his intelligence, right? Like his, his acumen for football, being able to draw plays up and get receivers open. So I think USC is a is a good team. Now I'll tell you what was one of the more disappointing games from this college football, and that was the Ohio State showing, right? Because we we still left from that thinking like, okay, man, CJ Straw, you stepped in last year, right? And you threw 40, 50 touchdowns. And then at the end of the day, it was like, okay, Gary Wilson left, Chris Olave left. So how is this going to look? CJ Straw, you you gotta you gotta power this thing now. And this past week, it didn't quite look like that, right? Like, we we know that Ohio State wide receivers, athletically, pound for pound, are better than Notre Dame's defensive backs, right? And they just it just wasn't in sync. So that was probably through my three biggest takeaways from this past weekend as far as, man, I you know, just what the kind of, I guess, hedge my bets on and what kind of like, all right, I'm going to see later and kind of get us a minute to figure out. DP, where are you at? Week one reactions right is it okay to adjust with uh, given it's a small sample size it's one week right like like let's be real here it's one week yeah. but like you know like like keith said i'm watching ohio state in in context there jsn got hurt fifth play of the game right which is that's a problem but still you're ohio state even if jsn is out everybody else is still marvin harrison jr and mecca and Booker. they're all better than everybody else still uh, DP, yeah. where are you at? Because you are too, I'll say you are probably one of the most high on Anthony Richardson. And I asked you the other day, like, why not put him at QB1? Kyle Krabs did it. He has him as QB1 in his most recent uh, 2023 NFL mock. Week one, yeah. like, how much are you adjusting your thought process for these players going in? Or, or are you like, okay, I, I'm going to write this down, but I'm not doing anything yet. I still need another week or two. Where, where are you at? I'm 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 like similar to what Keith said. I'm good with adjusting, right? But I will tell you one thing I took away from the Anthony Anthony Richardson game that I, I, I we talked about on one of our meetings this week was guys the poise, the mental aptitude, right? He was stone cold. He was a stone cold killer out there, just not blinking. No matter what Utah did defensively or offense, he knew Utah's offense was going to put up points. I think they finished after the second half. Both teams had one drive each where they did not score a touchdown. After that, and that was to start the, the third quarter. After that, it was touchdown, 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 and the last play was the interception. And so he knew, hey, Utah's coming. They're going to keep pushing and keep punching. But I'm not going to stop either, right? Like he was legitimately really, really poised and under control and just calm. And, and, and he kept his team calm too because if he was a young quarterback, and if he played like a young quarterback – one that just did not did not handle the moment well. The team wasn't going to handle the moment well, right? The defense knowing, like, man, if we can just get a stop, we know we got a guy that can take over this game. The offense knows, man, we just got to run our routes. We got to block. We got to get open. Just do our job, and AR is going to take us to the promised land. So I don't really mind anyone putting him at QB1 right now simply because we knew what the traits were coming into the season, guys, and then we saw it on full display. Like you said, he didn't throw for 300 yards, but he had, what, two, three touch, two, three rushing touchdowns? Yeah. Like, he was still super impactful, even without the big passing day, right? So, for me, it's just like everything else for him. Now, it's like the lights are on. So, that's for me. It's like, okay, it's, it's cool to adapt. Let's see how he handles the matchup, which we're going to talk about a little bit this weekend. Let's see what happens when, they, when he does see Georgia. But their schedule after this week and outside of Georgia and I think A&M, it's pretty favorable. Pretty favorable. So if, yeah. if he can knock, if he can knock off this weekend, get a great showing against that loaded Georgia defense that just keeps reloading and doesn't rebuild. Like you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's yeah. the, the the like you said, the elevator is going to the top floor, guys. It's going up. So I think, and my other take, one of my takeaways, Michigan is for real. And, 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 Whoa. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm put a, I'm put okay. Ask, Reese, whoa. I'm okay. A, talk about talk to <laughs> talk. Let me sit I'm, up in the chair. I'm talk to me. Ask her about this, but in, in, in I, I me and Keith talked about this on the pod, and from offense to defense, right? The biggest question for them, the two biggest questions was, 
What are they going to do at quarterback? Because you got Cade McNamara, who wasn't good against Colorado State. And then you got J.J. McCarthy, who is a much better athlete and more tools. And then defensively, you lose David Ojabo, you lose Aiden Hutchinson, you you know what I'm saying? You lose Dax Hill. Like, you lose some premier defensive players. Guys, I, I watched that game. They just retooled. Iyabi mm. Anoma. Keith, and I remember leaning on you about it because you said you scouted him. He was one of the best recruits you've ever scouted coming out of high school. I looked it what up. What position? I Give us the people. position. Who's what position? Edge, edge rusher. Edge right. rusher. He's a defensive end. Coming from he, he was at he was a five star recruit. Went to Alabama. Then he transferred to Houston. Then transferred to UT Martin. Now he's at Michigan. And the physical tools are clearly there, right? Uh, uh, just an unreal athlete, unreal specimen. They have other edge rushers as well. This defensive line is loaded. Mozzie Smith being that he was the number one freak on Bruce Feldman's freak list. They got a loaded defense in terms of talent. Offensively, Roman, you know, Roman Wilson, Ronnie Bell, yep. Cornelius Johnson. And, uh, I forget the kid's first name, but his last name is Anthony, number one, a, a explosive athlete at receiver. You got two two tight ends in Shoemaker and Eric All. You got Donovan Edwards and Blake Corum. You got a good offensive line. Jim JJ Harbaugh McCarthy. Needs to put, Get JJ McCarthy put in now. Put your foot down and say, I'm rolling with J.J. McCarthy. Let's change the numbers yep. in the box with this kid at quarterback. Let's force teams to come into the box and say, I'm going to stop this run game, and that's fine because I'm going to hit you over the top with this big arm that I got and these receivers. Let's maximize the talent because if you've got the right talent at quarterback, guys, this is a team that not only can knock off Ohio State again, this is a team that can make some noise in the playoffs if he makes the right decision and allow J.J. McCarthy to get – his reps in now because by the time we get to the end of the season, he'll be more seasoned and more ready for bigger moments. Let's get, boy, let's <laughs> DP talking that talk, baby. <laughs> Michigan is for DP. real. You see that <laughs> now. All right. So week one, we, we this this is a great segue into I think one of the bigger topics, at least Monday night, Tuesday night, um, going into Wednesday, right? And I'm just gonna say. As I'm watching the game and I'm watching this player run his routes, I'm watching stuff happen, I'm it looked like he wasn't all the way into it himself, right? Like and I don't know this. I don't have any inside information. I'm just sitting back saying it doesn't look like he's playing at a hundred percent. And we mess with Keith about his white jacket, but he's talked some real talk about Kayshawn Boutte. And I just want to ask you, Keith, because there's a lot of people out now. I'm seeing some wild stuff, brother. I'm seeing He's not a first-round draft pick. He's not a first-round caliber wide receiver. He can't get open. He was disinterested. Why is he quit on his team? I, I want to hear from you, Keith, and, and, and talk to the people why we should not or should, if that's the side of the fence that you fall on, be worried about Kayshawn Boutte. I'll just say I'm not worried about him, right? I'm judging his performance from week one, and there are a lot of other factors that went into what we saw but he didn't play well. He's got to play better. But I'm not sitting here saying he's not a first-round caliber wide receiver. He's not a first-round talent. I just want to hear from you what you saw from a lot of people's wide receiver one. He's my wide receiver one in the class. He's a lot of people's wide receiver one. What did you see and what's your takeaway from people that say he's a second-round pick, he's not a first-round talent, he quit on his team, like, you know, go away, Kayshawn Boutte? Man, it's, it's, it's so many elements into this, right? First of all, as you know, we watch film and we go over it, right? And, and you create principles and philosophies and standards in your film evaluation. And one of mine is that wide receiver is the most dependable position on the football field, right? Everybody, like this is not the same quarterback that he had last year. And when you watch the Florida State game, what wide receiver had a good game for LSU? Name me one. None of them did, right? And if you look at it overall, we I know, Ray, you've mentioned Malik Neighbors before. His issue in the game was well documented. They had Jack Besh. I don't know if he caught a pass I, in the game. I don't right? even know if he played. Like, <laughs> thank you. Tight ends. I, I didn't see any tight ends evolve, right? And then that's why, that's why I say situations matter. Jane Daniels came from Arizona State. Jane Daniels was a running quarterback in the Pac-12, right, when things were moving too fast. So now he's in the SEC. Just imagine what's going on, right? And so when Jane Daniels' best plays and biggest plays is what? Him taking off and running with the football. So when you talk about situations matter, 
I don't know if they got Kayshawn evolved early, right? And it's nothing just to throw a couple quick screens to him, let him touch the football, right? A couple jet sweeps, let him get the ball in his hands because that's what Kayshawn is special, right? It's it's when he has the football in his hands that he takes off on your cornerback and you say, oh, damn, right? And you say, oh, man, we in trouble. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that's what people are forgetting. And it's just after week one, I always say this, great players – they don't just stop being great. They don't just forget it over off season. Like Kayshawn wasn't just chilling at home. I'm pretty sure he was working out. Yeah. So it's not like he runs a forward now and he can't catch. Now in the game, did he play bad? Yes, but we've seen performances like this from a lot of receivers. Now what I would tell Kayshawn is this, hey young fella, you can't, me you can't mentally put yourself in that position anymore in the sense of the fact of you getting down on yourself and getting frustrated. And part of that had to do with what? pressure everybody knows he's number seven for lsu right yeah. everybody knows that that's the playmaker position everybody knows that he's the consensus number one overall receiver coming into this year so guess what you want to do you want to live up to expectations and i think that that was frustrating through one half you might have one or two catches for 10 yards and then what you do is when you get frustrated like we all like we all do as men right or just people period when you're frustrated you don't make the same decisions that you would make. You're not mentally all the way dialed in, and that's something that Kayshawn, out of anything, right, needs to work on. But moving forward, I, I, I if you ask me, Ray, and be like, you know what, Keith, how do you feel about the situation as far as Kayshawn's production and, you know, just overall, I don't feel great about it because how much of that is going to change? Like, if it's, it's from week one to week two to week three, Jaden Daniels is going to become a different quarterback, right? Is this offensive line going to look different? Because that was against Florida State. I don't know if people know, but LSU is in the SEC West. They got to play Will Anderson. They got to play Texas A&M. Yeah. They got to play Ole Miss. You know, then their cross rival is this Florida team that we just seen beat the number seven team in the nation. So I don't know if it's going to change, but that's when we as talent evaluators and all those people say, Kayshawn Boutte is not a first round pick. You should have been grading the athlete all along. Because when you have principles that, guess what, wide receiver is the most dependable position on the football field, you grade the athlete. So that's where I'm at with it. And, and it'll probably be six, seven weeks before I make my final determination right. on right. how I feel about Kayshawn. But, man, it's, I hate that people take one, you know, one, I guess, source of information and then take that and run with it, right? Like, they play 12 games for a reason. So let's give it some more time before we make a final determination. And you got these people that, oh, he was a top five pick, and then now he's going in the fifth round. Like, yeah. like come on, man. Let's 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 be real. DP, talk to, talk to me about what you saw from – because that's what's – to me, Keith and, and Dame, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that's the problem for me. You had all summer to figure out a way to get him the ball early. And it just didn't seem like they had any interest in doing that. Now, I don't know if that's a Brian Kelly thing. I'm not a, I'm not the biggest Brian Kelly fan, right? Like I thought, I thought he was a little bit of an overrated coach. And he comes in, got this fake ass Cajun accent. He's talking to people, just fraudulent, man. And you know, we 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 joke about that, but players see through that, man. Like you fake, bro. Like, yeah. like you don't gotta this do all that. what he's doing inside the building, right? Like imagine on a day to day basis what he could be doing that could just be rubbing you wrong. Because if you got in front of a million people, um, you, you know, your opening ceremony and you put on a fake ass accent, yeah. then what do you do behind closed doors, right? And 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 this is not calling for Brian Kelly's job or nothing right, like right. that. But what what we're doing is this. We're providing dynamics that actually take place inside of a football building and understanding that that players are people too. And this is still based on relationships and your coaches have to get your players to play hard for you. And how do you do that? It's, it's by that somebody that you respect as a person. DP, why didn't they get him involved early? Like what what did you make of it? Because we're probably all watching the same thing. Like throw the Kayshawn, get him open. What, yeah. what did you see and what's your take on his play? And I'm just going to tell you, Keith has me very... I, because I'm concerned about how's it going to change, right? Jaden is still going to yeah. run. Like he's pro if that first read ain't open, he's probably going to run. Where, where are you at with the situation and him moving forward? I, I feel like watching that game. I feel like they wanted to not not saying they wanted to highlight or showcase Jaden Daniels, but it felt like they didn't come in with a game plan like let's simplify things and make it easy for everyone involved, right? Like you're dropping back, you're trying to get case on. Yeah, we know he's explosive, but if Jaden Daniels in his first game for your program, let's get some man. I, I know as a scout and an evaluator, this term is 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 used in the wrong is used negatively. Manufactured touches, mm -hmm. right? Like we just saw Traylon Burks get drafted for round on, one, he, and he was used he, he, like Rondell Moore. 
Like he was used like Rondell Moore, a super size. He was used like a, they say everything's bigger in Texas. He was a Texas size Rondell Moore. You know what I'm saying for the Arkansas Razorbacks, man. And they use him as such, right? But that got him drafted. That got your offense rolling. That helped KJ Jefferson, right? Because that was your best offensive weapon. I understand that Kayshawn could do a lot of different things as a receiver, but if Jaden Daniels can't do the things necessary for him to take advantage of that, then let's get him quick bubble screens. Let's get everybody in a rhythm. Let's get everybody warmed up, right? Those manufactured touches don't just help the receiver. It helps the quarterback. It gets him into a rhythm where he's like, all right, I'm feeling it now. I'm feeling it. I'm seeing things. And, you know, I, I, I remember talking to – couple quarterbacks that shot to Quincy Avery at the QB takeover. And I talked to these kids. I'm like, listen, I know you're athletic. I know you run a 4-4. But start taking these dump these dump offs. Start taking this quick hitch. Why? Because that's going to force the defense to now close in on that. Think like a Tom Brady. Tom Brady knew if I keep hitting Julian Edelman for this five and seven yarder, guess what's going to happen? That strong safety going to he going to creep down. Now I can hit I can hit Gronk right at the seam, baby. It's easy money. So for me, that's where they have to change that. LSU has to get Kayshawn involved, move him around. Don't be static with his alignment. Put him in the backfield, baby. Put him at H back. Get him to a point where the defense is like, all right, where's Waldo? Where's yep. Kayshawn? Where is he aligned now? <laughs> and you start moving them around, and now they're, they're adjusting gaps, right? They're, they're shifting over. They're moving. What does that do? That also helps your run game. That helps your, your QB run game. Because when you're moving guys pre, uh, pre-snap pre across the formation, guys have to bump over a gap. That creates advantageous blocking angles. Do that. Do the different things. I get it, man. I, I always talk about this with coaches. Don't be stubborn. I understand your scheme is your scheme. But, bro, if you don't, if you don't call plays and operate to the cast of characters that you have on your offense or your defense, you're going to lose. So, and that's what we saw. We saw a bad LSU offense because they did not simplify things and just made it easy for their offense to get into a rhythm and just flow, man. So for me, it's like, how can they improve? Doing exactly what I just said. Get Cage on the ball early. Because he did, he was unhappy. You could, he was frustrated. Jaden Daniels was walking off the field, grab, hold, hugging onto him, trying to talk to him and, and, and keep his head lifted. And you know what I thought about, guys? Go back about two years ago. The start of the Cleveland Browns season, they're, 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 rolled, they're, they're having some success, but it's mostly due to the run game. Baker, I, remember, I can't remember who the opponent was, but I remember this sequence. Baker Mayfield, they score a touchdown. Baker Mayfield finds OBJ and Jarvis Landry, puts his arms around both of them, say, hey, your time's coming. He's trying to keep them happy. Why are you trying to keep them happy? Because you were incapable of getting them to F in football. That's why you were trying to keep them happy, right? So Jaden Day was incapable of getting Cash on the ball downfield against the coverage they saw. So make it easy. Let's get it to him in a, a quick screen. Let's get it to him in motion. Mesh concept, whatever. I know he had his drops, but this kid was frustrated. Let's feed yeah. him against a bad team this weekend. Let's feed him. Let's get him back into the motion. At the end of the day, we know the saying. Winning cures all. Like, you go yeah. on a four-game win streak, all this from week well, one is all gone, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. For the most part. For the most part. Winning, winning the cures most part. all, but yeah. Kayshawn wants them touches. You better believe he wants them oh, damn yeah, touches. 100%. You better believe you that. Gotta and, I, the ball. and Keith, I'm going to say this right now because you know it, it's going to be going down in Baton Rouge on Saturday. If there's some place oh, that, man, that I would want I'm, to I'm be. I'm mad I'm going to miss it, man. I am mad I'm going to miss it. It's going to be an all-star studded. You, it, it's going to be in Baton Rouge. It's going to be really close as if, if Alabama was in town. That's, that's it, how this LSU yes. versus Southern showdown is going to be. Yeah, so he's cased on early, baby. If <laughs> if he doesn't get the ball early versus he's Southern, transferred. it's going to be a problem. I mean, this is bad. Yeah. Rouge. For, for those of y'all who don't know, and Keith can talk to it. <laughs> I've just been as a patron, as a spectator, because I know the event, living in Houston. Southern and LSU are right across the street, baby. It's Baton Rouge, yeah. the tailgates. They, it's going to be rocking. It's going to be rocking at LSU. They better get them the damn ball early, Keith. That's that, that's all we can say. That's all we can say. <laughs> that's all we can say. Now, we're going to do some rapid-fire quick hitters because we do have some – the slate this weekend, for, from, for what we do – we're, we're evaluating individual talent. So there's all, every game is a good game, right? I want to see this player. I want to see maturation. But just from an entertainment standpoint, there's not a ton on the slate this weekend that you just get crazy excited about for the casual fan, right? I think the biggest game on the slate is the big noon kickoff. It's Alabama-Texas, right? Alabama's coming to Austin to face off against Sark. You know he was the OC at Alabama. Help get Mac Jones. You talk about coaches and, and helping players out. 
Uh, Sark put them in a put Mac in a good position to get picked early, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it, yep. it worked with those 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 players at Alabama. You got Bryce Young and Jameer Gibbs, and and on the other side, I watched uh, I watched the the Texas Rice game back, man. And I know everybody's new favorite golden child is Quinn Ewers, uh, five star kid, Ohio State transferred. He looked like a young player. I'll just say that that he looked like a young player, and I'm very concerned. <laughs> For him and that Texas offensive front. But Bryce Young, we know he's going to do his thing. Real quickly, the battle of the potential RB1s. You got B. John Robinson on one side. You got Jameer Gibbs on the other side. I, I think it's a safe assumption to say Gibbs probably has a better game because Alabama is just a better team. But Keith, what are you looking for? What do you want to see from both of these running backs? And we're honestly, I'm just excluding Bryce, y'all. Like, He's going to do his thing. Like, we're just not going to dive into that very deeply. But what do you want to see out of Bijan versus Henry Toa Toa, da uh, Dallas Turner, Will Anderson? Bur like, what do you want to see Bijan do versus Alabama? And conversely, Jameer had a good game last week. They played Utah State. I think he had like 90 yards rushing, nine carries, 90 yards. It was fine, right? What do you want to see Gibbs do, Keith? What, where you, what, do you, what do you want from these backs to, to, uh, on this Saturday? Yeah, so I, with Gibbs, I start with Gibbs. With Gibbs, I, I want him to fulfill the role and show how he's dynamic in the sense of the fact of this. He can be a running back and he can be a pass catcher out of the backfield. We talked about this and, and I comped him and I really like this comp of Aaron Jones, right? Like mm. and Aaron Jones is 205 pounds, but just imagine the ways that he get he gets utilized with the Green Bay Packers, right? When they want to bring A.J. Dillon in, Aaron Jones moves out to the slot, right? And then there are times where they let Aaron Jones be the running back and then he runs for 100 yards. And I think that's exactly with uh Jameer Gibbs can do for Bijan Robinson. Good luck, my brother. Like I, I, I don't know, I don't know what else to say, man. <laughs> man <laughs> no, listen. Keith. No, 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 I, no. Don't do that, it's, Keith. It, it is, and it's not, it's not a Bijan problem. It is not a Bijan problem. But if you're, if you're gonna try to get me to convince myself that um this game is gonna turn out in like great for Texas, I don't believe it. Listen, Ray, no. I did it last last week. I picked Oregon to beat Georgia, right? I'm not doing it this week. I am not picking a team from another conference to beat a really good SEC team. Won't happen. I'm not doing it. It won't happen. I'm going with Alabama. And, and more so, I just want to see Bijan make somebody miss in the backfield. The reason I say that is because there are going to be people in the backfield. And do, it, D DP, to that point, I don't think any of us expect Bijan to go out there and drop 250 on Bama, right? Yeah, and if he does more power to him, like right. you, you did your job. Like you, matter of fact, you, you get extra points for that, right? Like, because you, you're a running back on an undermanned Texas team going against the best defense in college football. So even more credit to him if he does it. What do you want to see DP Gibbs Bijan? What do you want to see? For me, what gives is, is is make meaning, continue to make meaningful impact, right? Don't just be a guy that has like empty calories in the blowout game. But if you have your first three touchdown drives, be an impact on those drives as a runner and a receiver, right? Just show that, show your traits, show your ability, right? Show your ability to be a weapon that we all know you are out of the backfield. But it's 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 crazy. I feel like people sleep on the fact that this kid has suit has legit long speed. Like he's got another gear. You get in open field, you break that inside zone, and you make a guy miss in the alley, turn it up. Let's go. Shift it into that high gear and dust them, right? Showcase that speed. Showcase that explosive impact ability that you have. Forgives. Just let the game come to you, right? Like he said, guys are going to be in the backfield. Don't. The one thing as a running back you don't do is come in trying to anticipate where the, the free defenders are going to come from. You got to see it and let it happen and make your moves and your adjustment in play, right? Don't don't force or speed up your process because Will Anderson is on the other side, right? Like for all the wrestling fans out there, you see the Undertaker coming down the coming down the ramp, right? It's 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 blacked out in the WWE arena, and you see the Undertaker walking slowly down. It's a mental game, baby. You already psyched out before mm -hmm. he gets in the ring. Don't let Will Anderson psych you out, Bijan. Like you know he's there. You know Dallas is there. You know Henry Toll Toll is there. But you're the most patient runner in He's college so football. So patient. Use that. Use that. Talk to your old line. And I'll tell you right now, as a, as a former running back, you're going to see your old, you're going to see Will Anderson set an edge. Man, cut up off of that because you're going to make your offensive tackle look good. 
Because if you if you kick around that, he's going to get you, and you can't let that happen, right? So just be patient. Let the game come to you. And, and, and again, for him also, show your, your worth and your impact in the passing game because that's the other thing. Get te, I Listen, Texas, Sarkeesian, get Bijan out. Get him out of the backfield. Move these linebackers. Say, all right, here we told told. Some got you as, as LB1. Let's see how well you can cover man to man, right? Let's let's make you play in space and, and make them uncomfortable. Yeah. So those are the things that I'm I'm looking for from a coaching staff and just from Bijan's perspective. Yeah, B, Bijan gonna have to stick and move, baby. He gonna have to stick yeah. and move and, and, and bob and weave. Muhammad Ali, baby. Yeah, he's gonna <laughs> have to. Muhammad Ali. Ali. I'll tell you what I'm interested too is um I, I went back and I'm tell there's a play. Uh, Bijan was getting wrecked in pass pro uh, versus Rice. There was one where the Mike Backer came down and laid him on his ass. So, you know, I I, I just want to see some of the little things. We know he's a, the most talented running back in college football. That's just consensus, right? I think Gibbs is right there. I think Sean Tucker is, is damn good. Zach Evans as well. But I just want to see some of the little things. And I do want to see those individual matchups. I want to see him get Will Anderson one time where he hits him with a jab step yeah. and cuts up. Like I want to see him because those are the caliber of defenders that he's going to face in the NFL. So if Bijan just, even if he goes out there and he's got like, if he finishes with, you know, 17 carries, 81 yards, like I'm like, that's pretty damn good considering all the circumstances. Right. Um, but yeah, the final good. topic we're going to talk about, it is probably, uh, the biggest college football game of the weekend for, for me personally. Uh, DP, I know you probably feel the same way, Keith, as well. But we're going to get a chance to see two quarterbacks that you guys as scouts have all had as top 15 caliber players throughout the summer. I mean, you, Joe, Brentley, uh, uh, Kyle, everybody. We've got this guy, QB, two, three, four, anywhere. In top three quarterback, top four quarterback. It's Will Levis versus Anthony Richardson in the swamp. And... I watched, I, I came away from Kentucky's game and Will Levis as he didn't play bad, but he also just, like he just played like Will Levis from last year. Like he just, like I was like, okay, that's Will Levis. Like you see the tools, he had an, an, an awful interception in that game. Now he's got a whole new cast of receivers. They're all young guys, like true freshmen, no Chris Rodriguez in the backfield. The offensive line is a mess. You talk about Texas offensive line. Kentucky's O-line is bad. But I, I walked away watching Levis saying, okay, like that's Will Levis, right? That's the same Will mm -hmm. Levis. But now he's head-to-head -head with Anthony Richardson. And if if Levis doesn't have a good game, I wonder just how the sentiment of him is going to be. And if he doesn't have a good game, it probably means Anthony Richardson probably balls out some way because that team is going to go as far as he goes. What are you excited to see, Keith, from this matchup? Kentucky versus Florida, 6 o'clock on ESPN. Will Levis, Anthony Richardson, two of the better dual-threat quarterbacks in this class. What are you looking forward to seeing? Yeah, I, so I, I think it's easy to pick Anthony Richardson, but I'm going to go with Will Levis. And what I, what I want him to do is do the same thing that Anthony Richardson did last year, right? Like the fact that you you have a lot of momentum behind your name as far as a guy that can take over. Like that's that's what we talked about. We talked about tools, tools, traits, traits. Use those tools, use those traits to propel your team to, you know, being a puncher's chance to win the football game, right? And I want to see them applied because if you just have these traits and these tools, but then you can't apply them, then – what, where where do I stand with that as a as a talent evaluator, right? Like, what are you? It, like like they always say, potential is just another word for ain't did, and we'll keep it there, right? For the FCA <laughs> stat airways, right? But that's what I don't want this to become is that Will Levis is full of tools and traits, and then now we're just automatically going to project it. At some point, I want to see it from you, big dog. Like, I want you to come through, make some plays, and be like, okay, this guy warrants a top three quarterback ranking because that's how you came into the season. So this is his first test of the year. I just want you to go in there, command the offense. I'm not asking you to win the game, but just look like you belong and look like you're the best player on the field when you're on the field. Keith, but I just said it. He's got freshman wide receivers. The O-line is a mess. The running, like... Uh, what do you want him to? How's how's he going to overcome that? 
Well, I, I mean, it's the thing. Like, we we apply it, right? And, and we say with other quarterbacks that, hey, like, you have to, you know, put it on your back. And that's what we tell quarterbacks all the time, right? We say, you know what? You're great. Put it on your back. And that's what the great ones do. When you talk about a Cam Newton from back in the day, right? Nobody wants to hear the Bryce Young excuse, the fact that he lost Jamison Williams and John Mechie. What they tell him? Nah, bro, you lost and you played bad because you're a little quarterback. So, like, I, I'm, I'm willing to give quarterbacks and say that, you know what, it's not surface level stuff. But when you talk about from media and just surface level evaluation, he has to go out and play well. Like nobody's going to care that you don't have a great offensive line and your receivers are a freshman. Right. You, you have to do something. And, and also as the quarterback, we say tools and traits. One of the best things about Will Levis is that he's, quote unquote, a mobile quarterback. So take off and run like yeah. nobody's stopping you from taking off and running with the football. Pick up some key first downs and keep the drive going. You know how many rushing yards he had last game? How much? Negative 18. And now, you know, in college, they count the sacks as, as rushing yeah, yeah, yards. Yeah, yeah. But I that was probably the most damning thing for me because I'm like, this is Miami of Ohio. Like, right, come on, right. baby. And, and DP, I want you to start with Levis, man, um, because I know... I know you like the tools, but I know you were not going into the season 100% sold that he is the second coming of Josh Allen or whatever you want to put on him. And I've said Josh Allen myself a couple of times, but I know you right. weren't all the way sold on it. And I'm asking you the same question. Are you going to give Will Levis some grace for not the offensive line being bad, for having freshman wide receivers, for not having Chris Rodriguez, the leading SEC rusher from last year. Are you going to give him some grace? Or are you just saying we didn't give anybody else any grace? Go be a floor. Are you a floor raising quarterback? Go make it happen. Like wh where are you at with what you want to see from Will Levis this weekend? Man, for me, Will Levis, one, one thing I'm looking for with him, and, and, and I like the question you phrased, I'm going to give him grace if he's consistently under fire, right? And, and one thing I continue to talk about, Keith knows, I, I've talked about it a lot. F you look at the analytics, you look at the tape from last year, 11 of his 13 interceptions came from clean pockets last year. Like, that's egregious to me. It's not because you were pressured, not because you had people hanging off of you and people at your feet. You just had bad decision making and you had some really spotty accuracy issues. Now, when, when your pocket's clean in this game, right, make quick decisions. Whether that's get out and, and make it play with your legs, and I know some people are like, no, sit in the pot. No, listen, let me tell you something. If you got if you got time and you can make that decision to get positive yards, do it. Okay, showcase that. Keep your team on schedule. Don't try and force this narrative that I'm this otherworldly pocket passer. Right? Be you, Will Levis. Like, be that dual threat, physical, athletic quarterback. If they get out of their rush lanes, make them hurt. We saw Anthony Richardson. Utah wants to drop back 17, 18 yards and forget that I'm mobile. Bro, I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, make that quick decision. Go through your reads. But like I said, and even watching that Miami, Miami, Ohio game, there were plays where he had clean pockets and his ball placement was just bad. On the back shoulder when guys coming across the field, not hitting guys in stride to give him chances to run after the catch. His best receiver, and I talked about it all offseason, Tavion Robinson coming from Virginia Tech. 5'11", 190, he's a dual, kind of dual threat type of guy. He's a kick returner. He's got speed. He's quick. He's shifty. He, he can do things in a bigger body that Wandale Robinson was able to do last year. And we saw that he was his, his top option yeah. last in, in the last game. But what I don't want him to do is do the same thing he did last year. And what I mean by that is when you do have that bang eight, to that unknown receiver wide open, you're staring at, 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 at Wandale. And on this situation, yeah. Tavion, because you're not going through your reads. You know what route concepts are called on each play. You're the quarterback. So look for that. If, I, I, we always talk from an evaluation standpoint with quarterbacks, look high, then low. You, you can't, it's, it's hard to look low, then high, because typically once you miss on that high throw, it's gone. <laughs> it's so gone. you look high, then low, right? So. If you know, hey, I got a bang eight, I got to go. You look pre-snap and see, man, I got three by one. Safety's on the on the far left hash. Oh, man, he's giving me space. I got one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to look over there quickly. Once the ball snap, let me see what my receiver do. My receiver wins, give it to him. Don't just immediately pivot and default to your to your blanket, right? Like, he, he overly uses his blanket receiver. So if, if the offensive line is getting killed, yeah, no, I, I got to give him grace because I'm not, I'm not, I'm a realist. You, you're not an Avenger. Like, yeah, and I feel yeah, like yeah, we just, <laughs> I, you're I was, not, you're not a superhero, man. 
But to have this conversation, though, DP, because we always talk trucks and trailers, right? Like we always yep, talk about yep. that. And and if what's he's that mean? Go, talk, what's trucks and trailers? Talk about that. What's that? What is that? Real listen, quick, a, a, a truck pulls the trailer, meaning that if he's a truck, then he's a guy that pulls the team and he mm, wills the team. I can hitch my right? wagon to him. Yeah, if you're if you're if you're a trailer, then guess what? The team is pulling you. And at the end of the yep. day, that's what we're trying to see. We're talking about a top five quarterback that's going on in the draft. That got to be a truck, right? Like, you have to be that yep. dude. Yep. I want you to be able to pull my franchise. And that's what Will Levis has to show that, you know what? I'm a truck. I'm a top five pick because, listen, Malik Willis was in the same situation last year. He had a bad offensive line. He had bad wide receivers. It was bad all around him. And we said, you know what? This guy's not a truck. He's a trailer. And he fell all the way to the third round. Now, he had the same tools and traits that we've seen talk, in the preseason. Talk, but everybody, everybody ignored those. So that's where I'm at. I'm like, you know what? This is just a statement game for Will Levis to decide or us to decide if he's going to be a truck or trailer in our viewpoint. And it don't get no, any easier for Kentucky um, after this. They've got, and and this is going to be a common theme for them. You know, they got to play Georgia. They got to go. <laughs> they got to they got to go through the SEC. What are they? SEC East, SEC East. They mm. got to. It's going to be rough, man. But uh, again, I think this is the matchup that we want to see. These two quarterbacks, much like last week, Cam Rising. He's not on that level. We're not mocking Cam Rising in the first round or maybe even second round, but he could be a day three quarter, day uh, early day three, maybe late day two type quarterback prospect, right? But Levis and Richardson, this is a battle of potentially the top, the first two quarterbacks off the board, potentially, right? These could be the top two guys off of the board. So I think we all want to see a progression and maturation. One of the things that I did see from Richardson that I really loved were there were some plays versus Utah where you saw him go one, go two, come back, and then go, right? Almost sometimes I'm like, stop doing that shit, eh? Just run, baby, (laughs) run. But you see him trying to work through the reads. So what I tweeted out about Anthony Richardson was his passing performance, nah. But the tools, like the ceiling, like you see, man, if he can just continue to grow. And I don't need him to grow uh, 100 miles in one game. I just need to see him take a one step forward in week two, take another step forward in week three. I don't need him to jump and do a triple jump or a long jump. Just continue to build upon the momentum that he set on a national stage, and it could be great for him moving forward. This is a fantastic matchup. Last fun topic that was not on the show sheet. Keith, we're about to team up on DP. DP, why do you love DJ Uyunglele so much, and where should we be <laughs> valuing DJ U? After that <laughs> performance uh, this past Monday versus Georgia Tech, where are you at with DJU, Keith? Is there still a shot? Is there still a chance that this guy can turn it around and put himself in a position to be a second-round pick in the NFL draft? Do you still believe in the talent of DJU? I, listen, I believe in the talent. I don't believe in that situation. Like I, I told you, Ray, half, once he hit <laughs> halftime and it was the same thing, I said, oh, no, I'm out. I'm out. I, I can't. Man, it's, it's the same thing. We have six, four, six, three wide receivers that run four, five, and four, six, and they're trying to beat people vertically. Like, it, it doesn't make sense, right? We talk about this Clemson offensive line that's gotten so much better and it hasn't. And I want to say this. Like, if we're going to say that other quarterbacks' situations are not good yes. and we can kind of, you know, put put a comfort zone for them, right, and say, hey, well, you know, they would be better in a better situation, then we have to apply some of that to DJU, right? And I'm not saying that it's it's context at the end of the day. Like, I, and, and that's where the conversation needs to be had. Just because you're not a top five pick doesn't mean you suck, right? Like, can you be a third-round quarterback and be okay and then turn into a starting quarterback in the NFL? And, and that's the area where I'm trying to, you know, live in for the DJU conversation. It's like, hold on, you know, let's make sure that we dot our I's and cross our T's before we say that, you know what, this is over with. We're completely done with a uh, big single as a player. So this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. Keith, me and you are going to go away, and we're going to give DP the floor. DP... Okay. <laughs> Talk about DJU. Is there still hope, DP? I think there is, guys. And like one thing Keith always talks about, he said it early on the show. Good, like good players don't forget to play football. When we was talking about Kayshawn, Big Cinco did not forget how to throw the ball. He did forget how to be accurate. It's the simple fact that the situation just is not good, right? Keith talked about the, the receivers. You're going against Georgia Tech and they're tall, 
long and relatively unknown cornerbacks and you're blanketed, right? I, I talk about it. When you got big receivers like that, if they're going against a bunch of five, nine, five, ten corners, oh DJ, you throws that 50-50, that back shoulder, you can make a play because you can outbody that guy. Right. They couldn't outbody the, those Georgia Tech defenders because they were the same height. Like they were they were neck and they were face to face, right? But this is the fact that you watched that game and there were throws. DJ, you had six th- those receivers dropped six of his passes. Yeah. Like let him down six times, right? You had I think it was Bo Collins, back shoulder fade. He put it only where Bo Collins could make a play. And it goes straight through your arms in the in the end zone on the sideline. You got to make that play. If you're an NFL receiver, that's T. Higgins, he's making that play. If that's Hunter Renfro, he's making that play. Sammy Watkins, he's making that play. Clemson has not had those type of receivers in quite some time. Justin Ross was that guy before the, the unfortunate injury that just that really just hurt him from a physical standpoint. But looking at the guys he got right now, you can tell me they were four and five stars. I could care less about the stars, baby. Mm. What are you right now? What are you going to be when I'm looking at you from an Italian evaluator standpoint? I'm not looking at NFL receivers. I'm not looking at guys that can get open. Last point, DJU, even though he's big, he's mobile, he, he's got the big on, he's a timing and rhythm thrower. So what do you do? You give him guys that can get open. You don't give them guys that can't win vertically and tell them to go vertical. That doesn't make sense. The New England Patriots didn't have Julian Edelman and Danny Amendola put them outside and say, run nine routes. No, they didn't. It didn't make sense. Like, you're not doing that, right? You, what you're doing is, again, I talked about it. Coaches, do your job. Bill Bezos always said, do your job, right? Coaches, do your job. I know what we have. I know the player I have. It makes no sense. I see Kay Clubney come in and you move the launch point. You put them on bootlegs. Bro, you got a 6'5", 235-pound quarterback with a big arm. Sprint him out too. Sprint him out right. Because then what that does is give you a two-way go. It's an essentially a pass-run option. If that flood concept is cut off and it's capped, guess what? Big Single can get some yards off of that. Now, and, and it makes defense. And so next time you come back to it, that underneath the fitter in the flats, he's he's itching close to the DJU, which gives him a bigger passing window to that quick, that quick flat route. Things... And Clemson just aren't good, guys. It, it's not. <laughs> Offensively, it's not good. So it ain't just DJU. He's got to do better, too, and, and, and play up to his caliber. But at the same time, I like I said about Will, Will Levis, man. We With quarterbacks, we got to stop doing it. These guys are – of the Avengers was a movie. I want everyone to understand that. The Avengers was a, a, a fictional movie. Uh, Black Panther's not real. Captain America's not real. Whoa. Iron Man is not real. Black Panther is real, baby. T'Challa well, is Chad real. Chadwick's real. I believe yeah, yeah, Chadwick's a real place, man. <laughs> yeah. I I believe, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But go ahead. Go carry on. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, T'Challa's real. T- T- T'challa's but carry real. on. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, we don't have nobody like Iron Man flying yeah. around in the iron suit, baby. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we don't have Doctor Strange around here. At least I hope not. Like, we, we don't have Wanda either. So those are fictional characters. Quit acting like quarterbacks have to be this superhero who is like, man, your receivers is doing nothing. Yo, you can't run the ball. He was their best running option. And they got Will Shipley. Like, he was their best running option. That tells you a lot about the fact that offensive line can get any vertical push. So, at the end of the day, they just have to do better in building their in their in building that offense and building their team. Shout out to Tony Elliott. He got a lot of flack for saying that he couldn't call a good game last year. No, he couldn't call a good game because he ain't had no good players. Mm. That's why he couldn't call a good game. Let's just call, call it what it is. And on that note, this is Draft Good Players. For Keith Sanchez, for Damian Parson, I'm Ray G. Make sure you tap in, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up arrow, and comment below. Let us know, what side of the fence do you lie on? Is there hope for DJU? What are we doing with Kayshawn Boutte? What to think about Bryce Young and Will Levis, Anthony Richardson? Let us know what you want to see But me, Dame, Keith, the Draft Network, we are tapped in. Make sure y'all are strapped in because we locked in, baby. We out of this thing. Peace.